Hi everybody, Frank from Classic Harley, back again with another video. This time, instead of featuring a bike, we're actually gonna feature RDRS, or Reflex Defensive Rider Systems. RDRS is an option that Harley has started offering on 2020 touring bikes, and it's basically an advanced electronics package that offers three things. Uh, tire pressure monitoring, a hill hold brake, and traction control. Now I'm gonna go through each one of these things in a little bit more detail. Let's start with the tire pressure monitor. The tire pressure on your motorcycle is obviously a super important part of safety and handling. If your tire pressures are incorrect, um, you can wear out the tire way faster than you would have wanted to, or lose traction in situations where you should have had traction. So the tire pressure monitoring on this motorcycle will give you a dummy light, which is down here in your speedometer. It's difficult to see right now because it's not on. The tire pressures on this motorcycle are actually okay. Um, it'll give you a dummy light when your tire pressure goes out of range, or you can actually see two different visual representations of what your tire pressures actually are. Here in the trip odometer, we go from the main odometer to your trip A, trip B, range left on the tank, and then front tire pressure, which is 39, and rear tire pressure of 44. Up here in your Boombox GTS screen, if we click on the information button and click on, this is what the dummy light down here in the uh, odometer screen looks like if it comes on. If we click that button up here, it'll actually give a really nice graphic of what your front and rear tire pressures are. So let's talk about this hill hold brake. When you come up onto a grade like this and then have to stop, you're faced with a few problems, especially if you're a new rider or a smaller rider. The motorcycle being running is going to be moving and it's going to want to roll backwards down the hill. Right now I have the front brake engaged. What most people do is keep a front, uh, excuse me, a foot on the rear brake. And if you keep a foot on the rear brake, you can operate the throttle normally so that you can pull out. But this has its own problem. If you let the bike start to get away from you to this side and you have to put your foot down, the bike is going to want to roll back because you took your foot off the brake. Another thing that folks do, especially if they have bigger hands, is they keep two fingers on the brake so that they can operate the throttle and then ease off the brake. Again, this takes a little bit of coordination and also a bigger hand. What Harley has added, they call a hill hold brake. And now I'm gonna have to uh, start the bike up so that you can see how this functions. If I come up the hill and come to a stop again, I'm gonna squeeze tight on the brake. When I do that, this little light on the dashboard lights. That's your vehicle hold control light. Now you can see that I'm totally off the brake and the motorcycle is not rolling backwards. If I put my hand back on the throttle and pull out, now it releases the brake so that I can continue. That makes it a lot easier for a beginner rider or for someone who's shorter or has smaller hands to deal with coming to a steep incline and having to stop on that incline and then pull out again. So the last piece of RDRS is the advanced traction control. Now you might wonder how is that different from the linked brakes or the ABS brakes that motorcycles from Harley-Davidson have had in the past. So let me give a, a quick description of how this whole situation has evolved. In 2008, we saw the first ABS brakes on Harley-Davidson Touring models. Those ABS brakes worked just like the ABS brakes in your car or truck. If the computer on the motorcycle noticed that either the front or rear wheel were not turning at the same speed as the other, it would pulsate braking so that you could regain traction and control. In 2014, Harley released Reflex Linked Brakes. 
reflex linked brakes simply added the fact that if you used all front brake lever or you used all rear brake pedal, you would still get the proper combination of approximately 70% front brake and 30% rear brake, which is the best for keeping traction in most situations. So reflex linking links your front and rear brake. ABS pulsates the brake if they're not traveling at the exact same speed. In 2020 with RDRS, we've released a true traction control. The true traction control does quite a few different things than just pulsating the brakes if it notices a slipping wheel. So what makes the traction control different from the ABS that you're used to? Uh, this bike has what's called an IMU or an inertia measurement unit. So basically what it's doing is you're going down the road and lean into a corner. It knows how much lean angle you have. It knows how fast you're going and it can sense whether or not you have any sideways drift. And if you have sideways drift while you're on the brakes, it can pulsate the brakes while you're in a corner based on the sideways drift and not just the difference in speeds between the front and rear wheels. That's called corner enhanced ABS. We also have corner enhanced linked braking. And basically what that can do is dynamically transfer braking power from the front wheel to the rear wheel based on data from that inertia measurement unit. So if it notices that the rear of the bike seems to be coming out, it can transfer more braking power to the front. If it notices the front starting to slip, it can transfer, transfer more braking power to the rear. Two more features that we have with RDRS. Corner enhanced traction control. What this is actually going to do is affect the throttle. So if you are leaned into a corner and you are on the throttle, say accelerating out of a corner, and you lose traction for any reason, you hit wet leaves, you hit some stones, something like that, and it feels that slip, it can actually cut some of the power to the throttle so that uh, you don't fishtail the motorcycle out from under you that way. We also have drag torque slip control. And what this is, is if you were coming to a stop and you like to downshift on your way to a stop, you actually get some rear wheel drag if you downshift and just let the clutch fly. This will sense that and it will add a little bit of throttle back so as not to hammer on your rear tire so hard or potentially cause a loss of traction situation from the drag that's put on the motorcycle from that downshift. So here's what's changed and why this is such a big deal. Back when we only had ABS, it was kind of like a light switch. Either your ABS is going to activate or it's not going to activate. Now we're monitoring way more variables about how you're riding and we can also react to those variables in different ways. We can add a little throttle, we can remove a little throttle. We can shift brake pressure from the front to the back. We can reduce brake pressure or increase brake pressure as the bike notices how your bike is responding to the situation that it's being put in. It's a way more advanced system. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking out there. Well, Frank, does this mean I can't do burnouts with my bike anymore? Of course not. We still have a way for you to do burnouts. We can control how the traction control works, and I'll show you how that's done up here at the handlebars. So to actually utilize your traction control, all you have to do is turn on the motorcycle. Traction control is automatically enabled every time you start your bike. What you will see when you first turn the bike on is that the traction control light and the ABS lamp on this side are going to blink. Those will blink up until you hit approximately three to five miles an hour and the bike does its speed check. Then those lights are both going to go off and stay off. Now here's the weird thing about traction control. If the traction control light is off, it means your traction control is on. If the traction control light is on solid, it means your traction control light is off. But here's why. That traction control light is a warning light 
to let you know that you are not protected by traction control when you've turned it off. Now, when do you want to turn your traction control off? Well, if you want to do a burnout, certainly you can't have traction control on. Also, there are some situations that you might be in that you know you're going to have limited traction. Let's say you go to a motorcycle event and you have to park in the grass. The grass is slippery. When you're trying to move out of that, your traction control could constantly um, cut power and make it difficult to ride the motorcycle. So you may want to turn your traction control off in a slippery situation. To do that, the motorcycle has to be running. And with the motorcycle running, you press and hold the traction control button for about a second and a half, two seconds. And then the traction control light will stop blinking. It'll come on solid. When that's on solid, you are no longer protected by traction control. Another thing that we have the ability to do is to increase the amount of intervention that we receive by traction control when we know that we're riding in treacherous conditions like the rain. We call it rain mode. And while you're riding, a quick click of the traction control button will turn on this little blue rain cloud. The little blue rain cloud means that you are going to get a more advanced intervention from your traction control. It means it'll activate a little sooner and it will be a little bit more aggressive with its intervention. It'll cut a little bit more throttle back if it felt that it was going to uh, fishtail out the rear wheel. It will cut off a little bit more brake pressure if it felt like it was going to lose traction from braking. So as you can see, the Reflex Defensive Rider Systems, or RDRS, is considerably more advanced than the former anti-lock brake system and reflex lick systems that we had before. In speaking with our customers, I felt like there was not enough information out there about this system to explain why it's so important and why it's worth adding to your motorcycle. Um, if you would like to see more videos about features of motorcycles or how to use the features on motorcycles, please either drop us an email or give us a comment down below. Thanks for watching.